Honesty, passion, experience. It's Timberwolves Explosion, hosted on the sportstuff.com. And now, your host, Paladino Joey. Hello again, Timberwolves fans. Are you ready for the explosion of Timberwolves basketball? I am your host, Paladino Joey, or Joey Awajan. Timberwolves Explosion is available on the sportstuff.com, iTunes, Stitcher, and Double Twist. Nice to be back once again today. Timberwolves, uh, well, I guess I predicted things accurately. Bad matchup with Philadelphia, and you know, that's an interesting game for lots of lots of lots of reasons. Uh, two in one week, though, you beat Dallas, you beat Sacramento, so perfect accuracy this week, I suppose. Yeah, and it's not about my accuracy, it's just the fact that Wolves had a winning week, and well, it could have been even better, but... I don't know. That Philly game it was uh, quite interesting and, uh, well, <laughs> extracurricular activity, all that good stuff. Uh, it's going to be a nice rivalry in the coming years between Joel Embiid and Carl Anthony Towns. Uh, interesting, though. Maybe Joel Embiid woke Carl up a little bit with some of that trash talking and uh, encouraging him to play a little better defense, which I would have to say he did in the Sacramento game. Uh, he had a low scoring gun at Dallas, high scoring with Philadelphia, kind of a messy game, kind of like wide open back door. Even Tosh Gibson was guilty of some of that stuff. The Wolves leaving the door open, you know. I mean, you don't want to do that in this day and age, right? In real life, and you don't want to do it on the basketball court ever, leaving the back door open because, uh oh, dangerous things could await. And they did, kind of, sort of. Uh, well. Okay, Wolves 2-1. and one. We're going to have a lot to talk about in terms of, well, this show, it's getting personal. Uh, Carl Anthony Towns getting personal, and Kevin Garnett getting personal, and he's been personal for a while with Glenn Taylor. I was thinking of doing the Garnett one here in the first segment. I'm going to leave it until the third, even though I'd like to do it right now, but, you know, I'm going to let that build up a bit because, well, today posted uh, what Garnett said about Glenn Taylor and the Tim- owning the Timberwolves, this, that. So, yeah, it's, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll get to that in a little bit. But um, interesting stuff, personal stuff between Carl Anthony Towns and Joel Embiid, Instagram, this and that. Yeah, we'll get to that in a minute. Not so bad game against the Dallas Mavericks. Not the best game. Kind of a lazy Sunday game against the Dallas Mavericks. Sunday. December the 10th, Sunday afternoon, Sunday evening, actually. But the Wolves won. Um, Dallas just not that good, obviously. 8-21, and 5th in the Southwest Minnesota. At the moment, after this, this week, 17-12, and 12, first in the Northwest. So that's the good part. They were 15-11 and 11 at the moment when the game started. Who the heck is Maxi Kyber? A uh, Kleiber, pardon me. I barely ever heard of the guy, but hey, you know, he's, he's okay. He did a good job for the Dallas Mavericks. I'm like, he looks familiar, but hmm. Well, good for him, I guess. Dirk Nowitzki, yeah, he's just a shell of himself, like I keep saying. He's not bad. He's efficient when he's out there, but eh. And I talked about how the Mavericks needed, uh, if the Mavericks were going to somehow beat the Wolves, which would really suck if it happened, Wesley Matthews would have to go off, and he really didn't do that. He was clanging shots most of the night, 6 of 17, 2 of 8. It just didn't have a good shooting night, and Yogi Ferrell, Yogi Ferrell, it's just, hmm. Well, I mean, Dallas is at that time right now. They're definitely in rebuilding. Uh, Seth Curry, that's the other one, uh, not not available. Nerlens Noel, the first Noel, not available. Dennis Smith, not available either. So, geez, why did the Wolves only win this one by five? I don't know. I guess overconfidence or something like that. Or just, I don't know. This is a team that's kind of bored or something. Another question. Question. Against the Dallas Mavericks, why does Jimmy Butler need 41 minutes? So, yeah, that's kind of getting interesting, too. Obviously, uh, Tom Thibodeau getting a bit testy with Jerry Zgoda, Zgoda of the Star Tribune last week. Kind of like, what do you mean? I, I, I don't know what you got. I don't even know what you're talking about. You know, they just kind of go back and forth about the, the minutes and Carl not getting the touches against Memphis. That's, that was after the Memphis game. Carl sloppy, but good numbers. Yeah, you know, he had a pretty good week for the most part. I would have to damn say. I, I would. Uh, Jimmy Butler, amazing game against Philly. We'll talk about that in a little bit. Definitely won his matchup over Wesley Matthews. Not a bad game, ultimately. Just, I don't know. Wolves kind of screwed around in this one. Carl, though, seven turnovers. What the hell is that all about? 18 turnovers against the Mavericks. Kind of yucky. The Mavericks protected the ball pretty good. Only 10 turnovers. That type of game. Mavericks had a solid game for their standards, which is kind of mean of me to say, but they're not good in Amar. They're kind of like the old Mavericks now. A bunch of no-names and, and, and has-beens at this stage. I hate to say, lots of has-beens on that roster. And, well, your young rookie kind of star point guard, Dennis Smith Jr., not available. Nobody really stood out in this game other than Ken Butler 
and Carl. Andrew Wiggins had just a yucky game, didn't shoot well, got to the line, only made half of them. Oh, Andrew, I love you so much, but I'm not, I'm, I don't know, this wasn't a fun game to watch, really, to be quite honest. It really wasn't, but the Wolves won. Jamal Crawford, spark plug off the bench, 16 points, blah, blah, blah. Mr. Shabazz Muhammad, you won't even hear his name mentioned this whole show because he's done. He's just been inactive all week, not because of injury, he's just been uh, DNP'd, I should say. Um, just, what's his name? Oh, what's his name? Uh, Tom Thibodeau, not interested in playing Shabazz Muhammad. Interesting thought process here. I'll say this now because... I will forget, so I'll say it now. Shabazz Muhammad turned down a four-year, $40 million contract, which is, of course, do the math, $10 million a year from the Wolves because he thought he was going to get a $20 million a year contract the next summer. <laughs> Whoops, that's not going to happen. I mean, there's no way. I've seen nothing on a Shabazz Muhammad that would warrant a $20 million a year contract. Um, he turned it down, less than two, or about $2 million for this one year. Less than $2 million actually. And, well, mm, I'm sorry, but Shabazz Muhammad not impressing anybody right now. Obviously, the defense has never been there. The offense is there, but it's what it is. Uh, Carl, though, again, I mean, you could keep saying this, and I'm going to keep saying it, too. You get frustrated watching him whine and complain all the time about calls, doesn't get this call, doesn't get that call, and then he makes a cute little statement after the Philadelphia game, which makes everybody so impressed. And, you know, a lot of... I agree with some of the local media here that's not impressed with the, the whole, oh, it's all my fault, this and that, whatever. And even Jimmy Butler said that. He said, no, no, I don't agree with that. Even Jimmy Butler didn't agree with that, and good for Jimmy. Uh, you know, stop trying to play the, the hero by, oh, it's my fault, we lost. You know, stop trying to play like, you're, it's good that you're trying to take accountability, this and that, but you're kind of, I don't know if he's coming off as fake or what it is, and that kind of bugs me a little bit. But I liked what I saw out of uh, Carl Anthony Towns against Sacramento. Trust me, I liked what I saw. Let's get to that Philly game. Let's get to the This is easily the game of the week, unless you want to say the Sacramento was in terms of the way the Wolves stomped all over that club, which was nice. Uh, Tuesday, December the 12th, very winnable game in terms of the Wolves played very well for an extended period. Jimmy Butler was insanely awesome. He was playing like the other number 23 in a lot of ways. Joel Embiid, though, damn it, he just had to be healthy for this one, didn't he? <laughs> and he's really, really good. Breaking news. Yeah, he's really, really good. Uh, Trevor Booker, too, with a frustrating block on Carl along the way. Ah, oh, that guy played pretty good, too. Uh, Trevor Booker, aggressive defensive player off the bench. I believe he's one of those guys, yeah, me and me and the forecaster were targeting years ago in the draft. I think he went to the Washington uh, Wizards at the time. Now he's at the 76ers. Lots of nice players on that roster. J.J. Redick, I keep thinking he's on the Clippers, and the uniforms are kind of similar, aren't they? But he's not on the Clippers. He scorched the Wolves throughout the night. He was foul, fouled behind the arc at one point. Made all 11 of his free throws. Embiid, Joel Embiid, that's right. 11 of 12 at the line, and he was just insane. He had the play of the night in a huge way. Cut through two guys. Uh, he went through Jamal Crawford, and then just went right around Carl Anthony Towns, and of course posterized him, and Carl's on the ground, Joel Embiid's way above the rim as he's dunking it, posted it on Instagram and all that, and talking about how, uh, <laughs> basically talk how, how the cat was rising, that type of thing, or, and it's just like, whatever, and then Carl Anthony Towns basically said, the caption on your picture is trash, and then... Joel Embiid responds with, so is your defense, basically. I'm paraphrasing. I'm not saying it exact. I don't even have Instagram because I don't care about Instagram that much. I think it's just, eh, it's overrated. But interesting back and forth between Joel Embiid getting a little personal, getting a little personal with these two guys. And, of course, again, Carl taking it on himself, this and that, after the game, and Jimmy Butler saying, no, no, it's not all his fault. No, just kind of like, eh. And uh, Robert Covington didn't even play, one of the more valuable guys, but, hey, 76ers were pretty much at full strength, even though Covington's a valuable guy. Um, Sarich with some pretty nifty passes also as well, and even freaking Joel Embiid was a nice pass down low, <laughs> ultimately to, I can't remember who it was now. Mm, that's okay, though. I believe it was to Ben Simmons. Yeah, and Ben Simmons had some really nifty plays in the game. Boy, he's got a smug look on his face sometimes, though. I don't know why. <laughs> he, he can play, though, but, oh, he's got a smug look on his face. Mm. I hope he wipes that off one of these days. I don't know if I like that very much. But I love my Australian friends there. And I know they love Ben Simmons. And he's got this all-around game. He's a nice uh, 
tall point guard, basically, is what he's become in this league, and very impressed, kind of like Scottie Pippen on the offensive side, in ter- in that sense, kind of a point forward guard, point forward guard, if that makes any sense, uh, didn't have the best offensive game, but the plays he did make were very good, so we'll give him lots of credit there. Jimmy Butler, again, was just downright outstanding throughout the game. Uh, Franchise-tying record for Jimmy Butler in field goals attempted. He went Michael Jordan on this game. 33 attempts. That's uh, crazy. Andrew Wiggins had some nice moments in this one. He had some nice moments against the uh, Sacramento Kings. A little better stats, I would have to say, against Philadelphia, but he didn't shoot well. 8 of 24, 1 of 7 from downtown. The Wolves were clanging threes the whole night, and it was just, ugh, it was yuck. It was just terrible. The Wolves were 1 in 11, one of 11 at one point. They ended up finishing 5 of 29 from downtown. That's 17%. You're not going to get very far. It's like you're running on a tank with no gas in it. You, you know, too many three-point attempts when you're not making them. And it's just, I don't know, it's like you're playing desperate. Like, this is an NBA jam where you're just launching threes all day. I mean... Really? And then Carl, of course, getting frustrated, getting the technical foul, and we all know who Carl is. And my question becomes, too, bloody hell, mate. What the hell is this? And pardon me, I have a little Aussie in me. And not really, but yes, uh, honorary Australian. Tuesday night against this team, this, this entertaining rising team. They're the Timberwolves of the Eastern Conference. Take that as you will. I, I think it's a compliment uh, on both sides. They're the Timberwolves of the Eastern Conference, rising team and all that. Less than 15,000 people? Huh. And you know what? I'm not one of the people that went either, so shame on me, right? But, of course, it's tough when you work the schedule I work, so... But I gotta get my ass to some games, too. Um, gosh, that's that's weak, man. So it's still... Hmm, it still is what it is, isn't it? Uh, and I know fans are probably frustrated, especially with Tom Thibodeau and too many minutes, and, and then you get all this research coming in where really it's not that bad, and then you come back with, well, what about... It's not just uh, Derrick Rose. That was more of a freak injury. Was he more prone to it because of that? Where his tendon's kind of too loose because he's been playing too much? Is it that? God knows. That's, that was a freak injury for Derrick Rose years ago in that playoff game. Oh, that looked like it hurt too. Oh, oh. Just It was like an impact type of... Uh, it was like an impact, non-contact type of situation when you're like jumping. So you have all this impact in the center of your knee and then... Ta, you know, just imagine the little like a piece of celery. That's basically what happened to him. Ah, and um, what am I getting to? Uh, what the heck is that guy <laughs> going crazy here? Joe Kim Noah. I'm like almost forgetting the guy. Joe Kim Noah. I mean, yeah, he was pretty much toast at age 32. Often injured this and that, plantar fasciitis and this and that thing. The one thing after another. 32 and the guy's freaking toast. So too many minutes. I guess, and Carl made a statement of saying, well, it doesn't really matter right now, I'm this age, I'm not really worried about the future, I'm worried about the present, not worried about the past, worried about the present, this and that, regarding the minutes, and too many of them, and he played 48 in the game against the uh, Sixers, by the way, of course it went to overtime, Jimmy Butler clutch, but then the Wolves gave up a kind of a silly basket, and couldn't, Jimmy Butler just couldn't sink a shot at the buzzer, almost, almost got that one, that was a disappointment, (laughs) too bad, I'm not mad at him, it's just, mm. I think he shot a little too much, but he was freaking awesome. And the Wolves in general did not shoot well, so you can't get mad at Jimmy Butler. Uh, Teague actually was probably the, yeah, Teague was the hottest man of the night in terms of shooting. Everyone else was awful uh, in terms of field goal percentage. I mean, Taj Gibson, 33%. Uh, Andrew Wiggins, 8 of 24. That's 33%. Yeesh. Whew, that's rough. <laughs> you could go on forever. Jimmy Butler, like 40-ish. Uh, Teague was over 50%, 8 of 14, and he was solid in the game. Not so much of a flow offensively from him in terms of that because there was a lot of isos in this game. So that's what happens. When you have isos, you get a lot less assists. I mean, Crawford led the team in assists with only five. 19 total assists for the Wolves. They were spread around a bit, so it's not the worst stat ever, but certainly not the best. This, that. Fun, entertaining game to watch, but, ah, you know, that overtime period sucked. Uh, The Wolves were tired, and yes, and they're blaming the minutes on that, too. Down the stretch, the Wolves were playing so well in this game, and then the fourth quarter, leading into overtime, they looked tired, and the Sixers had more energy, this and that, and Joel Embiid had his good game and his good night, and blah, blah, blah. 28 points, 12 rebounds, and the eight assists, a couple of them, just absolutely gorgeous. The guy's got a wonderful future in this league, and, man, he really... 
got into Carl's head quite a bit throughout the night. And, you know, I mean, it seems like a lot of these guys, the good the good centers tend to beat up on Carl Anthony Towns. They beat up on him verbally. They beat up on him physically. He gets frustrated, and he just doesn't have his best games, and he didn't have his best game. Um, he's, he's had worse games than this, but, eh, you know, eesh, eesh. Uh, I, I like the rebounding. He did get some blocks in the game, but overall, he, he, he had some moments. He blocked Joel Embiid in the game at one point, but he, there were times he just kind of let him walk, go right by him, and it was so frustrating, him being uh, Joel Embiid, so, ah, so frustrating indeed. Ultimately, the Wolves lose the game, and I already talked about the whole Instagram, and I talked about Carl taking it all on himself, and oh, woe is me, I'm so sad, I feel so hurt, and this and that. Well, just get mad, Carl, just get mad. Um, Joel Embiid bullied you, and he gave you a hard time on Instagram, just get mad, that's what you gotta do. And, oh, you mad, bro? Yes, I'm mad. I'm going to kick your ass. That's what I'm going to do. You want to wear the you mad bro shirt and taunt me? I'm going to whoop your bleeping ass. That's what I'm going to do when you do that. And Carl kind of took it into the Sacramento Kings. Let's keep it going, though. Not just take it to the Sacramento Kings. Take it to the next team and the next team and the next team. Let's let's start stomping people. Get mad. <laughs> say, you're, say you're tired of this bull crap and start kicking somebody's ass. The Wolves did kick ass against the Sacramento Kings Thursday the 14th. Man, is it two months away from... Valentine's Day. Oh, goody. Oh, I'm so excited for Valentine's Day. Aren't you? Hmm. Well, <laughs> one nineteen ninety six. I mean, that's uh, 1996. That was a kind of a cool year, but I'll take 80s, 86 over 96. That's just me. Man, the Wolves just uh, did some butt kicking. 24 point old fashioned butt kicking. Good solid defense for the most part. Of course, there's always going to be gaffes in every game. I mean, you're going to get open layups. You're going to get uh, uh, icky play here and there, but overall, a nice, solid game for the Wolves. Look at Sacramento's rotation, man. <laughs> but of course, they were down by X amount of points the whole game, so of course they're going to open up the bench. <laughs> oh, Vince Carter, he looks really old, doesn't he? He's very gray, and well, that, that's the way it goes. He's 40 now, and our lives, you know, time waits for no man. Seems like not that long ago he was a rookie, a rookie, and he's 40. So that's when you know you're getting old, when you easily can remember a guy as a rookie and you were already kind of an adult or just becoming an adult when the guy was uh, drafted. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I, I was an adult already, and he's 40. So, yeah, you're getting old. Getting old, Joe, getting old. <laughs> uh, but regardless, Sacramento, mm, George Hill, couple threes, nice plays, or lots of threes in the game. Some of the some of the perimeter defense was, meh, but you know what? When you beat a team by that much, why complain? I can't complain. Carl's defense was much better. His offense was much better. He didn't park at the three point line the whole game. He went down low quite a bit, and when he was on the three point line, he got the ball, made a fake, and attacked the basket. That's where okay, sure, I could see where if he becomes a three point threat, and he's a little bit. He made two of four, so that's kind of a perfect. This is like a perfect game for Carl, to be quite honest with you. This is like the Carl Anthony Towns that I adore. The, the game against the Sacramento Kings, and sure, it's against Sacramento, but he did it though. He did it. Bottom line, he did it, and just less than thirty five minutes too. So, just the perfect game for Carl. Th this is what it is. You make a fake. You get the guy in the gr up, off the ground, attack the basket, and then even draw a foul. How about that? And 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 one overall awesome game. Thirty points, fourteen rebounds, five blocks, five assists. It just doesn't get much better than that. I love this game from Carl Anthony Towns. You know, I mean, I was going to come in here and rant a little bit, but then you see a game like that, and you just put your feet up, ah, you kick back and relax, and just say. This is what it's all about right here. This is what makes you love basketball. And it makes you love seeing Marcus Georges Hunt playing in the second quarter. He didn't just get minutes because the Wolves are up by X amount of points. He got minutes when the Wolves are up by 7, 8 points. Nice to see. And he hit a 3-point shot. Just He, he looks okay. He's alright. But good to see him out there. And getting some, getting some burn, as they say. Solid overall game. Nobody was spectacular off the bench. I think the best guy off the bench was Tyus in this one. Uh, Gorgie, though, overall has had an awesome week. And, you know, yeah, Gorgie actually, Gorgie and Tyus. Gorgie was good all week. He's looking like the Gorgie of old. His field goal percentage not so good, but you saw that mid-range shot that Gorgie made all last year. Just silky smooth, beautiful shot. 
Kind of reminded me of Malik Steely, the way he shoots it sometimes. It's just, it's, I liked it. He had four steals in the game. He blocked a shot, did Gorgi Overall, solid game off the bench, 24 minutes. I, I liked what I saw throughout the game. Uh, Jeff T got a buzzer beater at the end of the half after George Hill had... <laughs> after George Hill beat the buzzer on the shot clock just to play before. So Jeff Teague answering the three-point shot from George Hill. Gotta like that. Not the sexiest game from Jeff Teague, but, uh, you know, that was a nice little shot, and it kept the Wolves in position to win the game, and that was great. Uh, fun night. Andrew Wiggins had some nice plays to the basket. He had some catch, catch and shoot threes. Solid game offensively. Not a whole lot going on. Elsewhere, elsewhere with the rebounds, assists, the steals, all that. Zero pretty much and all that. Just one rebound in the game. So that's the kind of box score from Andrew Wiggins that people get frustrated seeing. So, But you saw ag- ag- aggressiveness, and he was sharp throughout the game offensively. So I'll take that. I'd like to see a little bit more, <laughs> a little more, a little more multifacetedness from him. But, hey, you know, if, if that was his game that night, that was his game that night. Carl stole all the blocks. So, yeah. Jimmy Butler, exquisite as well. Um, only 10 field goal attempts versus 33. He made seven of them. Just awesome game. Nine assists from Jimmy Butler. He was like the top playmaker throughout the night, helping out Carl Anthony Towns and kicking kicking it out to Andrew for three. Overall, multiple, uh, multi-asseted, super fun night from Jimmy Butler. This game was pleasant. It was enjoyable, and, you know, this is this is why the Wolves are 17 and 12. They, they kick butt on teams like this at the very least, and we appreciate it. <laughs> you don't want to have a stinker at home against Sacramento, and the Wolves did not do that. Um, luckily, Demarcus Cousins no longer with Sacramento, <laughs> but they do have Zach Randolph, who's been a thorn in the side for Carl Anthony Towns, and Carl took it to him most of the night for for the most part. Uh, Zach has still got it though at his old age. Really, still still got it in a big way. He had nine rebounds, 15 assists throughout the night. Very strong. 15 points, pardon me, throughout the night. Uh, strong effort from the old man. Sacramento, a weird team, though. Lots of old guys and a couple young guys. De'Aaron Fox, yeah, didn't see a whole lot, unfortunately. And, uh, boy, frustrating night for him at the end of the day. So, that kind of is what it is. Wolves win again by 24 over the Sacramento Kings. So, that was fun and pleasant. We'll take it any time, any day of the week. <laughs> I would have to say. So, where does that leave us now? That leaves us with, uh, that leaves us, pardon me, with passing out the awards. The Alpha Wolf Award, you know, Jimmy Butler had it pretty much in the bag, particularly with that Philadelphia game, but I, I'm going to give it to Jimmy and Carl. Carl was good most of the week. You know, he he, he, fa- he faced up to uh, Joel Embiid for the most part. Of course, Embiid beat him, and hopefully next year, or later this season anyway, actually in, in March, that uh, Carl Anthony Towns has a nice response to Joel Embiid on the road in Philly. That would be pretty amazing. But uh, we're going to give it to Carl Anthony Towns and Jimmy Butler, the Alpha Wolf Award, the Johnny Flynn Memorial. It's got to be Shabazz Muhammad. I mean, he's just invisible. He's not earning minutes. And, of course, Tom Thibodeau, it's annoying that he doesn't play anybody half the time. But if uh, Marcus Georges Hunt is getting the minutes and not Shabazz, that tells you something. There's something going on, a major disconnect between Shabazz and Thomas Tom Thibodeau. So that kind of is what it is. Johnny Flynn Memorial to Shabazz Muhammad. Let's take a quick break. We will preview three more games, and then we'll get interesting in that fan interaction segment with Kevin Garnett running his mouth again. Gimme, gimme. My name is Jimmy. We are back here on Timberwolves Explosion, segment number two. Let's preview three games, all Western Conference related, all winnable, and two of them Northwest Division related. We'll open things up with the Pacific Division, though. The Phoenix Suns over there, those sons of guns. Sons of guns. That was funny, wasn't it? Well, yeah, they're 9-21 and in the Pacific Division. It's been a back-and-forth situation with the Suns and the Timberwolves so far this season. Devin Booker going off on the Wolves. Ender Wiggins having some good moments. Jimmy Butler, this and that. 118 to 110, Phoenix over Minnesota back on November 11th. That would be Veterans Day. And then uh, the 26th, right after Thanksgiving there, Minnesota crushing Phoenix a bit. Well, kind of crushing them. 119 to 108. Nice game, though. I mean, both actually, both games were won kind of soundly by the other in that sense. Now we get 
not the rubber match, but, well, kind of. <laughs> kind of the rubber match. The team that would take the advantage, Minnesota, would be hosting the Phoenix Suns on the 16th of December. That is this Saturday. And, of course, we wrap up the series just before Christmas, same night as the Packer game. Ouch. Minnesota and Green Bay coming up Saturday, next Saturday. So, hmm, that's kind of bad timing. But I suppose that Packer game was supposed to be a nooner, I believe, wasn't it? And they moved it to Saturday. It was supposed to be a Sunday nooner game on the on the 24th of Christmas. The 24th of December. Yes, but you get the idea. Um, ouch. <laughs> that kind of hurts for that game. But I'll, I'll be watching it. Don't worry. I'll be... Having both of them on, it's kind of tough. You have to podcast both teams, but hey, I deal with it all winter with the Minnesota Wild and Minnesota Timberwolves, so it kind of is what it is, isn't it? Uh, yeah, well, how about them Suns? They're okay. They're not that good. They're annoying, though. They can be really a pain in the butt to deal with sometimes. Yeah, well, Devin Booker's scoring like crazy. His defense is what it is. Tyson Chandler can be a headache. Alex Len can be a headache. I mean, both of them, they can block shots. They sneak in at the last second, knock the ball away, poke the ball away. Uh, Alex Len, very much a factor in that uh, case. Greg Monroe, you almost forget he got traded there in that Eric Bledsoe trade to the Bucky Duckies. Okay, that was goofy. Um, I keep seeing the name Mike James, and I keep thinking of one guy, and ugh, I don't want to remember him very much. Devin Booker, though, he scores just pretty good, though. In the game we lost on Veterans Day. That was a, boy, that was a tribute to the veterans, I suppose, for uh, Devin Booker. Jeez. So, uh, yeah, five losses in a row for the Phoenix Suns coming into this one. Toronto, they got beat pretty soundly. Washington beat them by 10. Spurs beat them by only three. Hmm, close game. Good effort. Good effort. Lost to Sacramento. Ouch! But it was on the road. And then a uh, six-point loss to Toronto at home. And then they host the Timberwolves on the 16th. Well, let's keep that losing streak going for the uh, Phoenix Suns. The Wolves need to win the game, of course. No kidding. And then the Wolves are hosting the game. Let's get the job done. And then take our chances in the Valley of the Sun next week. A winnable game. A mu- it's not a must-win, but it's a you-should-win type of game. I mean, let's not mess around with this team. I think the Wolves will win a sound effort. You'll see a good game by Wiggins, hopefully. Uh, usually he does well against this team. Carl has had good games. He's had meh games against the Suns because the matchup, you know... Uh, Gosh, everybody's got a veteran big man, don't they? Everybody but us. Well, then again, Todd Gibson's a veteran big man, but more of a, a power forward than a center, of course. So a little bit different game than, say, a <laughs> Tyson Chandler, guys like that. Uh, Chandler, who looks like he's ancient, but at the same time, he's still got it. He's still got the mobility, still got the the ability to score at a fairly decent level. Um, not necessarily scoring, but uh, to block shots, all that. It can be frustrating to go up against a guy like that. Uh, Towns did have a huge performance last game. I think he's going to continue his run, to be quite honest. Uh, I think he's going to be on a little bit of a mission of late because he's been called out in social media and all that, which is annoying and frustrating and all that. Kind of like this thing right now. It's not even moving. But <laughs> Carl, nice effort last time around. Andrew Wiggins usually plays well against this club. But I do think Carl will continue what he's been doing of late. So that's where I go with. The Minnesota should win the game. I'm going to go along the lines of 115 to 100, 103, something like that. But Minnesota will win soundly by double-digit points. And I think Carl's going to get upper 20s. Andrew Wiggins will get mid-20s in the game. Jimmy Butler will contribute somewhere in there, low 20s, something like that. You'll see the big three basically really... Uh, roll. Devin Booker, of course, will annoy us. He'll have some good moments. He'll scorch the net. He'll shoot too much, though, and the Phoenix Suns will not beat the Timberwolves on the 16th of December. Let's move on to the Portland Trailblazers. Monday, December the 18th. I don't believe we have played this team this year, and boy, they've been a thorn in our side forever, as has Denver at times. And yeah, wow, we're just finally starting the series here. Of course, like I just said, the 18th of December on Monday, and then you go to from uh, you go to January the 14th, January the 24th, just 10 days later, and March the 1st with the Portland Trail Blazers. I like playing the Blazers in like February, March. It's kind of fun. Just like old memories, old old memories with that back in the day. Of course, Garnett on the team back in those days. <laughs> Garnett and even further back, Isaiah Ryder and Leitner, all that, or say Isaiah Ryder on. The Blazers, Damian Lillard has been scoring like a madman, one of the top scorers in the NBA. He's gotten even more crazy in that facet. Uh, 26 points a game. He's kept the Blazers in playoff contention. They've really struggled of late, and their schedule's been fairly tough. Uh, the Pelicans, is, you know, they're not, they don't have the best record, but they're always dangerous. The Washington Wizards, they got they beat the Blazers. That's two losses in a row, four losses in a row total. As you feel, they face Houston and Golden State. Good luck with that. 
and then they beat the Miami Heat by a couple there, by about seven, then Orlando and Charlotte coming up, and then Minnesota, so a road trip, quite a long five-game road trip for the Portland Trailblazers. They'll be wrapping it up in Minnesota. Hopefully they're tired and they and they lose, but <laughs> I don't know what to make of this one. It's not easy to predict. Home game for the Wolves. I mean, I think, you know, you, you, you want to go with the win. You hope the Wolves can go 3-0 and this week. It'd be huge. Get the Wolves to 20 wins this early for the first time in many years. That would be awesome. I mean, 20-12, and 12, there you go. That was a pretty good year, too. But uh, Damian Lillard, we all know who he is. He's great, obviously. C.J. McCollum is, an actual, is actually a better shooter, particularly from the outside, and he has really given the Wolves hell over the years. The Wolves did pass on him in the draft. They wound up trading down and getting Shabazz, Muhammad, all that. We didn't want uh, C.J. McCollum. We didn't get uh, Contavious Caldwell-Pope, who's not as good to C.J. McCollum, by the way. Uh, the starting the, For the first year of C.J. McCollum's year was not that great. And then next thing you know, he starts scorching the net, and he's beyond what was advertised coming into college there. Uh, kind of a tweener guard, of course, short shooting guard who can shoot the lights out. He can make plays for people as well, though, even though he's not a point guard at the end of the day. Yeah, they still have some of those slow, plotting big men that aren't good, that aren't real good. They're just seven foot, just meh, you know, slow guys. Uh, Al Farik Amino, when he's healthy, can hit the three-point shot. There's no doubt about that, but he's not always healthy. He's dangerous when he is around. Evan Turner is another guy who's been a bit of a bust, and he's Kermit the Frog imitator, but okay, I'm sorry. <sighs> that was mean, wasn't it? That was mean. Uh, Shabazz Napier makes shots when he gets them. That's basically the case with him. Uh, doesn't create a whole lot of separation. Certainly not what a lot of us thought when, well, LeBron just loves him, but just because LeBron loves somebody doesn't mean he's as good as is advertised either. And Shabazz Nibir certainly has not been as advertised coming into the draft years ago when he was drafted by the Heat, traded to Miami, and or excuse me, traded to Miami, traded to Charlotte, and now ultimately winds up with the Portland Trailblazers at this stage. Joseph, Joseph, Joseph Nurkic, definitely a threat always down there. Denver Nuggets traded him away, but he's done a heck of a job. You got Jokic and Nurkic. Those guys were a good combination in Denver, but you couldn't keep both of them. They wound up keeping Jokic, and we're going to talk about him next. Winnable game, blah, blah, blah. Andrew Wiggins usually plays well against Portland. I mean, Wiggins, there's just certain teams out there. Carl, though, it's like you want to believe he's going to keep it coming. Why does this feel? This feels more like a Butler type of game to me, though. Uh, Lillard versus Teague will be fun to watch. We know Lillard's going to score like a madman, and Teague's defense is not that good, this and that. I mean, Lillard is just ape bleep this year. I mean, uh, he's shooting a little bit too much. His field goal percentage isn't that great. That's probably one of the reasons the Blazers aren't that great either. Other than CJ McCollum and Nurkic, Nurkic, there isn't a whole lot to pass the ball to, especially when guys like Alfa Rigamino are hurt all the time. And Evan Turner is just not that good. I mean, he, he he's not even 20% from beyond the arc. He kind of sucks, actually. <laughs> Napier, again, doesn't create a whole lot of separation and blah, blah, blah. There's a lot of underachieving players on this roster. The Wolves should win the game, but Lillard has been a thorn in our side forever, as, as has McCollum. I'm kind of scared coming into this one. I'm probably more scared going into Denver, though. Uh, I'll pick a win by the Wolves, kind of like sh- cautiously. Something like 105-103. It's going to be one of those epic battles. Maybe it'll go to OT and it'll be like a final score, something along the lines of 115 to 112, something like that. Um, I have a feeling Jimmy Butler's going to go off for about 30. Uh, I, I, that's what I'm feeling. Just This just reeks of a Jimmy Butler game for some reason. Wiggins has had some good games against them. Carl's definitely had some good games against this club, but it just I just have a Jimmy Butler vibe, and he'll end up helping the Wolves win the game. I can see Deke having one of his nice uh, nights, too, though, where you're just like, oh, I just love this guy. Like 19 and 10 type of game. A uh, couple steals, but uh, yeah. I think Teague's going to get double-digit assists and 19 points, maybe 22 points from Jeff Teague. We'll be smiling at Jeff Teague in the night, even though Lillard was going to go for 35 or something because it'll go to OT or be one of those epic battles, so to speak, down the stretch. Uh, McCollum, though, is the guy who, if the Wolves lose the game, I think it'd be because of CJ McCollum hitting three after three after three after three, which he's done multiple times to the Wolves in the past. That would be why the Wolves would lose, because Lillard's going to get his. McCollum's going to get his, too, but if he's scorching and he makes, like, 7 of 10 type of thing, Wolves are going to lose. <laughs> it's just the way it is. You know, the song, The Way It Is, Some Things Never Change. Well, CJ McCollum's a really good player. And when he's hot, he's hot. That type of thing. Oh, 
what am I reading here? I thought I saw something flash on the screen here. What the? This guy. Okay. Uh, I'm a, what the heck is, oh. <laughs> okay, another one. Stupid. Okay, Garnett's quote. That's just popping in front of me. Tim, Tim Rule's owners suck. I must see till I die. I must see till I die. Okay, well. Yeah, well, I'll get to it in segment number three. <laughs> yeah. Mm. It's just you read some of that and you just, you know, I'm sorry, but Wednesday, the 20th of December, the Minnesota Timberwolves go to the Mile High City. Oh, goody, to play the Denver Nuggets who are second place in our division. They're a threat. They are. And I hate this team so much and I hate the Blazers so much because I'm just filled with hatred and that's all I, that's all I am. I'm just spewing hatred all day, right? No, I think it's somebody that used to wear number 21 spewing a lot of hatred and he's getting personal and that's one of the reasons for the title of this episode. It's, oh, come on, man. Gary Harris leading that club in scoring. Jokic being what he is, a double-double threat. He even makes nice assists and everything. He's averaging almost five assists a game. Nice passing. Nice Euro center is Nikola Jokic. He is a wonderful player for those Denver Nuggets. Jamal Murray continues to improve. He's not quite reaching the potential. I thought he would, but he still might. It's still there. He's averaging 15 points a game. And about like mid-range minutes, like 27 minutes. That's, you know, okay. So he... Start some games, doesn't start some, that type of thing. Doesn't play like crazy numbers, crazy minutes. Uh, Wilson Chandler's one of those glue guys. Kenneth Freed, it's just don't know what's going on there. It's like he never plays much anymore. Uh, only about half the game. Uh, Malik Beasley, not Michael Beasley. Mason Plumley, who, yeah, he was in the dunk contest two years ago, and I still don't understand that one. Daryl Arthur, one of those guys that slipped in the draft that basically nobody even thinks about these days. Poor guy. Oh, Daryl Har- Daryl Arthur. This was years ago, of course, and he sat there frustrated, kind of sad, and he's he's had a he's had the kind of career where he just you can tell he's just mm, he's he's sad. You know, he wishes he had a little bit more to uh, brought more to the table. Uh, Denver has been a back and forth team. They're two and three in, the, in their last five, losing to New Orleans, beating Orlando by fourteen, getting beat pretty soundly by Indiana on the road. But okay. Crush Detroit, who's fallen off the face of the earth again. And, of course, losing to the Boston Celtics, which everybody does these days. Um, that was a good game, though, in Boston on December the 13th, just recently here. Good game, but unfortunately for Denver, they did not win. Thank you, Boston, though. We want them to keep losing. Is Moody Eye as advertised, though, coming out of the draft? No, I'm not that impressed with Emmanuel Moody Eye, okay? Not, not yet. Still has the right to improve. Still has the right to become something and and uh, reach that uh, potential and all that good stuff. Denver's a threat, and I still I, I did make them a playoff team in the uh, season preview, and I'm not shying away from that one. They're only two games behind the Wolves. They're a game and a half actually. They have a game in hand type of situation where they've won they've only won one more loss and two less wins that type of thing. So one and a half games behind the Wolves. Would be nice for the Wolves to win this game to create a little separation between these clubs. Would be wonderful to win the division. Uh, interesting how the Wolves have not played Denver or Portland yet, but, well, we're going to be playing them now, and it's going to get interesting the next week or so here. A very pivotal month. Winnable games, but very important games with Denver and Portland and Phoenix and such this week and through the rest of the month here. We, uh, yep, of course, December the 20th, and then you get the week later, the next Wednesday, Wolves will host Denver, then they go, then we go back to Denver way much later on April the 5th. Maybe the Wolves will be trying to clinch the division at that point, and then April the 11th. Wow, that's kind of late, but pivotal games for playoff positioning and division championship hopefully would be great. Only the second division title in Wolves history would be awesome. Uh, that's if uh, Oklahoma City doesn't go crazy and start winning some games. They go Prince and start going crazy out there and crushing people, but uh, we'll just see what happens with that one. Wolves three out of their last five, and Denver two out of their last five. Ugh, winnable game, but I don't know. If the Wolves are going to lose one, I think it's this one between Portland and Denver. If we win both, wow, that is just huge. Huge confidence boost for this team. We go 3-0 and this week. That's what I'm really, 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 really hoping for, and is it too much to ask? Yes, no, maybe so. If the Wolves are going to lose one, it's probably this one. We've had a lot of frustrating games in Denver. One of the, A close game, you know, 
frustrating calls, no calls, this, that, just lucky shot, all that bull crap. Uh, Gary Harris is a guy who can go off at times. He's averaging just under, well, 40%. He's 39% from downtown. Will Barton, 41%. Again, another one of those guys of the David Kahn, you know, infamous 2011 draft where he traded down, traded away about 50 times to fill up the bag with $4 million to fire Kurt Rambis. Ooh, ooh. Uh, Jokic is what he is. Carl always plays well against the Denver Nuggets. I'm expecting him to do so in this one. This is a Carl Anthony Towns kind of game. If Carl goes off for 35 and 15, a game like that, the Wolves win. <laughs> you know, obviously, um, well, not obviously, but obviously, you know, you got to think like the Wiggins Butler combo. They show up, they help Carl Anthony Towns. They don't have a frustrating shooting night. And a million times over, you could say this for every single game defense, defense, defense. I mean, if the Wolves keep Denver to under 100 points, their chances of winning are insane. Um, Denver's obviously an offensive team capable of getting steals and frustrating you and hitting from the outside. Like, they've been pretty much since the 80s. I mean, they've been that way since the 80s. Even when they sucked, they've been one of those frustrating teams that'll hit those three-point shots and, and just take the steal the game away from you at the last second. Again, all the way back into the 80s. Uh, always been an energy crowd, an energy uh, type of team. They've been that way again since the uh, 70s, actually, when Rick and now, uh, what's his name, coach there? Uh, what the heck is his name? Of course I know his name. Ah, get back to him in a little bit. Coach Detroit in Philadelphia, of course, won the championship with Detroit. Uh, everybody knows who he is, and I'm just blanking. It'll come back. Um, Malik Beasley, I already mentioned that. This is a winnable game, but the Wolves, I think Denver's going to win the game. I think Denver will get over 100. I'm praying again that they don't. Then If they don't, I think the Wolves squeak it out by like two, something like that. But I get the vibe Denver's going to win something along the lines of 105-103, 105-100, 104-100, something like that. Free throws at the end. The Wolves just don't close the job. Denver wins the game. Gary Harris has a nice, solid performance. Maybe Jamal Murray goes off, something like that for... Wolves passing on him, this and that, in the draft. I don't know. <laughs> but I think Denver's going to squeak it out, unfortunately. And the Wolves have another two in one week, though. We beat Portland, but don't get past Denver. So that's my take on this week. We'll be back for some interesting conversation in that fan interaction segment. are back here on Timberwolves Explosion segment number three, fan interaction segment. Speaking of fans, I got one in the background again. I got a little hot there, so apologize if it's a little bit annoying in the background. I'm sorry, but I, if I get too hot, I can't I struggle up here. So it is what it is. Um, this is the uh, long-awaited fan interaction segment. I've been waiting all week to get into some of this information here about Arnett flapping his lips again. Gah! Drives me. I, I wish he'd stop some of that. Okay, let's start with Twitter first. At Wolves Explosion, at Wolves Explosion, let's get rolling here. want to thank Tanae Brown and Levi Brown and Vince Germano for retweeting the most recent show. Question the process, and this one, of course, is getting personal because Carl Anthony Towns and Joel Embiid is getting personal a little bit there, and Kevin Garnett's getting personal with Glenn Taylor. Uh, okay, continue. Let's go. Tanae Brown says Jimmy Butler's having a Jimmy Butler... To close and make plays has been massive for us this season. So, oh, yep, in, in general. Yeah, um, it's interesting stuff from Alan, Alan Horton he's retweeting. is uh, uh, Tanae Brown, he's saying, uh, Alan Horton says, of course, he's the Wolves radio, the uh, play-by-play voice of the Timberwolves. He says, uh, checking in on a major issue from last season, Minnesota record run leading by 10 points. So, yeah, being able to close out games. That's what Tanae's saying there. Uh, in last season, the Wolves... We're 24 and 22, just barely above 500. That's mm, not too good. <laughs> they were in, we were in 30th place. When leading by 10 plus points, the Wolves were barely above 500. And I remember that very well. They lost 22 games last year when leading by 10 plus points at some part of the season. This year, well, we're in the middle, a little above it. We're number 11, a winning percentage of 85.7. 
<laughs> 12 and 2, so much better. And yes, Jimmy Butler is part of that. So thank you very much. Very valuable information there from Tanae Brown and, of course, Alan Horton there. Thank you for bringing that to the table, Tanae. That's appreciated big time there. Uh, I think there's a response in there somewhere. Where did it go, though? Um, Tanae also was saying, yep, also, I have a Baz rant I want to get off my chest. Hopefully, I'll get a recording to you for the next show, mate. And yeah, this was a few days ago, so yeah, please do. You're still welcome to do that. Uh, it's very much welcome on the show. I think Vince and Tanae, quite, there's a good chance they might both be on the next episode. So please do uh, send that to Tanae when you can, please. I understand if you're busy, though. I'm busy, too. I, I feel you big time, so... Half the time I'm lucky I'm able to record this podcast, but hey, you know, I am I want to do it so bad, though. That's why I'm here. So let's just keep rolling. Um, another one. Yep, there it is, the the whole thing with, uh, yep, <laughs> Carl Anthony Towns and Joel Embiid from Ble- Bleacher Report. He's retweeting it. Uh, Tanae says, maybe this will light a fire under Hat to play some D. And damn right, he, he needs to because of what uh, Joel Embiid said. He, there it goes. Uh, again, Carl Anthony Towns. So here's the exact quotes from Carl. He says, that caption was as trash as your picture quality. Ouch. Yeah, but then Joel Embiid says, better quality than your defense. Ooh, ee, ah. Yep, a lot of uh, bada bing, bada boom, back and forth there. Um... Where, what did Joel Embiid say? Yep, Euro, Euro stepping our way through Minnesota, and we ended up raising the cat last night. Hashtag the process. Yep, back and forth, better than your defense. Yep, there it is. So, interesting. Interesting stuff. And yes, Carl played some defense, and he did do a good job. I did reply something. And it, Levi, where, 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 where is it? Where did it go? Damn it, I, I know I said something. And it's not showing. That's because I suck. Again, it's Wolves Explosion at Wolves Explosion. Why did I click on that? This should load something. Yes, I said, to be fair, Cat got absolutely embarrassed on that play. Yep, it was definitely the play of the night, this and that. And I was saying how Carl needs to quit worrying about this and that, complaining all the time or pouting and just focus out there. He'll get better and better very quickly. And yeah, and that's what he did against Sacramento. Um, Today's conversation was, I didn't see the game, but Cat was pissed about it post-game in his interview. Yep. Carrying on from our private conversation, the intensity Cat had on D when KG was around is something I'd love to have back. Yeah. You know, if only Garnett could, if, if only Garnett could change his attitude a little bit, things would be better, and he's not going to right now. Garnett's as stubborn as the, as the day is long. Mm. Tanae says, I thought Butler would get him to buy in, but so far this season, he's acted like a superstar when he is not one yet. Yeah, kind of like the whole uh, diva, blah, 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 uh, uh, what's the other word? Prima donna. Yeah, a little bit, and sometimes uh, Coach Tom Thibodeau acts like a prima donna out there. He complains after every call. I mean, every call, he looks like he's going to, like, he looks like he just got robbed from whoever, from <laughs> from Bandit Bill and in uh, New Mexico or something. Okay, let's keep going. Wyatt Earp and all that back in those days. I'm losing my mind. Let's keep moving. Tanae Brown says, uh, okay, that is the response already. Oh, so it's showing all of it. Uh, And here's the last one. More 2K18 jersey leaks. This is Tanae again from New Zealand. He says, here's the Wolves one, very plain. I like it more than the other team's ones, though. And it's a gray jersey that says Wolves, kind of like an old school font, kind of, kind of old school meets new school, like what the Wolves have on their uh, their navy blue ones. It's a gray, just gray. It looks like, yeah, it's a uh, it's a shade of gray. It's not fifty shades of gray. It's just a shade of gray. And okay, there's multiple shades. There's three shades of gray, to be fair. And of course, you got to have that Fitbit logo on there. Otherwise, NBA is just done. You know, without that Fitbit logo, it's over. So. Yeah, let's keep moving. Let's get to a couple. Let's get to a shout out here. There'll be a couple ultimately on the show. But first of all, we'll start off with Flips Army, the Flips Army page on Facebook, of course. I want to thank uh, Trevor Wickerin for allowing me to post links to Timberwolves Explosion on the Facebook page. I'm much obliged to give them a shout out and encourage you to join that Facebook page. Please do. Lots of nice, long, intense in game threads. Knowledgeable Wolves fans, young Wolves fans, old Wolves fans, this, that. There's the good ones and the bad ones, but that's that's life. There's good and bad fans everywhere, so 
that's the way it is. But lots of knowledgeable ones there as well. Very worth uh, interacting and having fun there. Of course, Wolves news and conversation during the course of the week on non-game days as well. Uh, at the end of the day, though, please do join Timberwolves Explosion Facebook page if you could. Facebook.com forward slash Timberwolves Explosion or look up Timberwolves Explosion. Click on the one. If, if two show up, click on the one that's the page, not the group. The page, not the group. Like it. Conversate with me if you could. It would be greatly, greatly appreciated. See if there's a response here. Question the process. There is the Wolves new logo, but it's not on the... Uh, it's still not on iTunes yet. Uh, Hank, Hank slash Wayno, Wayne Hunt, that's his real name, is just, you know, he's working insane hours because he works in, in the retail world, and it's the Christmas season. It's not the holiday season, it's the Christmas season, but you can also say it's the Christmas and the holiday season if you want to be perfectly fair. So, yes. Um, <laughs> Nicholas Simon out of Australia says, We'll listen soon. I'm already questioning the process and Thibs. What does he even do? Well, he complains a lot. Uh, he expresses defense, and he wants defense, and sometimes he gets it, and sometimes he doesn't. That's kind of what Tom Thibodeau does at this point, and he wants uh, former Chicago Bulls players on the roster. Yes, um, some of them good, some of them not the best, but Taj and uh, Butler have been wonderful, I think, for the most part. Has Butler stunted the growth of this team? Uh, I'd like to hear what Vince Germano has to say. He's got some interesting things coming, and of course, Mr. Tene Brown has things to say about Shabazz Muhammad. It will be very interesting to hear what those knowledgeable fans have to say. And Nicholas Simon, always welcome on this show as well, out of Australia. Thank you very much. Love your brother. Uh, do post, uh, or yeah, you're always welcome to do a uh, call-in as well, call-in slash audio submission, which what Vince and Tanae are about to do very soon. I posted a rant here, and I'll get to... Uh, I'll go to the visitor post first, and I'll come back. It's a mini rant, nothing huge, but it's uh, I say a lot. Ah, uh, oh yeah, Mr. Vince, uh, Hank McCoy, he's a little ticked off at me at the moment. Damn it, things moving around here. Hank McCoy slash Wayne Hunt. I got to start calling him Wayne Hunt now. He says, since every Timberwolves fan is bitching about Coach Debs, I'll trade you anyone on our roster for him. Take your pick. So you give us Marcus Gasol. You give us Marcus Gasol? Hmm, that might be a good, uh, that might be a good trade. But then again, who would coach the Wolves at that point? Uh, Dave Yeager? No. Well, mm, I, I don't know. That's the other thing. Who would we get back? Or who would we get as our coach? I have no idea. I don't know if I'd want somebody's interim coach. Uh, I kind of do like that guy, though. Wow, what's that? <laughs> J.B. Bickerstaff. I kind of do like him a little bit. But okay, let's continue. And he was on the Wolves uh, coaching staff for a long time there. Uh, ultimately helped replace Kevin McHale for a while. Uh, in the interim, and then ultimately replaced by uh, Coach Pringles slash non-Pringles with the mustache being shaved. And maybe it was the mustache that was holding the Houston Rockets back. Because under Coach Pringles, so to speak, former Pringles, he's been, uh, the artist formerly known as Coach Pringles, has been pretty awesome so far for the Houston Rockets. Though, of course, the playoffs did not finish well at all. Continue, Joey, please. As Wayne is probably saying right now, here as he's hearing me ramble, Funny how every Wolves fan online becomes a super coach all of a sudden with a degree and minutes played. Well, I have a master's, so no, I don't. <laughs> I have a PhD in NBA conversation, Wayno. A PhD. Yeah. I, you can call me Dr. Joey. Dr. Palladino Joey when it comes to basketball. Okay, maybe not. <laughs> but something like that, right? Yes, he's a defensive coach, but let's look at this roster and what defensive players he actually has to work with. Jimmy Butler, best defensive player on the roster. To number two, Carl Anthony Towns. How many games have we watched his defense slip back door on him? Defender, yeah. How many games have we watched his defender slip back door on him? Or should I say, how many per game? Yeah, yeah. Like I say, you got to lock that back door. You're leaving it open too much, Carl, and some of the others. Even Taj Gibson was guilty of it. Oh, in that uh, freaking... Uh, Sixers game. Taj Gibson, number three, says, uh, can at least keep a player in front of him and knows the system, but yeah, he did get nailed in the back door late in that game. Even even Taj Gibson was guilty. Number four, Andrew Wiggins, not the defensive specialist we were led to believe coming out of the draft. I guess my point is, you can't make strawberry jam out of a pile of shit. And I love, I could hear Hank saying that. And you can't make offensive specialists into defensive ones. If you can't do what the coach needs you to do, especially in the Western Conference, as he's putting in quote uh, parentheses, then sit your ass down on the bench until you learn enough said. 
That was good. Uh, a lot of good points there, without a doubt, because some of the guys aren't, well, they're just not defensive players. And if you're not a defensive player, you can't become one right out of the gate. So that was really well said by Hank. Um, adjustments would be nice. And then Hank continues saying, uh, oh, and I almost forgot, for all those Timberwolves fans out there calling for Coach Thibs to be fired, which I'm not. Uh, he says, but that's me saying, which I'm not. Guess what? Minnesota are fourth in the Western Conference Last time I checked, maybe he does know what the bleep he's doing. Look at ya. Yeah, um, it's also, though, I think the West is a little on the weak side right now, other than two teams that are scorching everybody. Okay, three teams that are scorching everybody. See, like, yeah, but to be fair, too, as well, like, good luck beating them. And at the same time, uh, mm, it's a tough one. It's a tough conversation back and forth. It's like there's it's mediocrity after that. Yes, good luck beating them, but then yay, it's like it's kind of cheap in both sides, I suppose, being fourth. But okay, I'll take fourth though if it's there, and I actually picked the Wolves to be fifth with OKC. So okay, I get you. I just figured that some of the other teams would be a little better along the way as well. But uh, I was saying I didn't call him for for him to get fired, and there are people out there. I think it's too early. Hank was saying, I know, or I keep calling him Hank. Wayne was saying, I know that, but you guys are sitting fourth in the West. We are not even halfway at the halfway mark of the season, and there is still room for improvement. I'd say that everything is going as expected so far. You can't cheapen or take shortcuts to winning or building a winning culture. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. That's good. That's good thoughts. He says, Yes, early times still got to go through the grind of the season and jail as a team to find that identity. Not all teams do all all their gelling during training camp for most it's a process yeah i mean because of uh oh i think he accidentally had buff said and that's why uh, dan may was making fun of it but he had corrected it by the time i saw it <laughs> dan may's like buff said lmao yep uh, typos that happen all the time on facebook especially if you're using uh um voice text which i'm very very much guilty of using all the time voice text you'd think that technology would be a little better than it is and I think a lot of you understand my frustration with that. I think, you know, because, you know, you get sick of t typing with your thumbs or fingers on a, on a touch screen phone. It's a pain in the bleeping ass. So then you resort to voice text, hoping to God it works and gets things done faster. And then it Fs up half the conversation. And instead of saying today, it says Tuesday. And instead of saying does, it says doesn't. And then it just, you could send it. And then you're like, ah. You either look really stupid or like you're being mean to somebody when you're actually trying to say the opposite. I would love to come. I would not love to come. Or I would not like to come. You know, <laughs> when it's like, yeah. Yeah. Well, no, I appreciate what Wayne said, though. I appreciate a lot what Wayne said. Very interesting thoughts. Um, <coughs> and, yep, it, it's, it's taking time. It's just certain teams, boy, they get going right away. Like, look at the Celtics. They're just rolling. Um, of course, the 08 Celtics rolled right away, too, this and that. Um, the Celtics have a few more veterans. They have some young guys. And, of course, Kyrie Irving is like instant, like, uh, you know, instant uh, credibility for the Celtics as well. And he's done an unbelievable job. And I'd love to see the Celtics knock those Warriors on their you-know-whats in the NBA Finals if things come to that. But Cleveland, of course, still, boy, that's going to be an epic battle because, again, we all know who Kyrie played for before. Cleveland and Boston in the East Finals is going to be one of the great, great playoff series, I think. I hope it's not some sweep or five-game series. I hope it's a great series, as long as one of the two doesn't get too tired to beat those bastards out in the Northern uh, Northern California, because I want those guys humbled, and I want them humbled hardcore. Okay, let's roll. This is it, finally. I wish I probably, uh, part of me wishes I did this earlier, but let's get to it now. Hopefully you've been listening. Hopefully you didn't leave already, right? No, I, I don't think so. Tanae Brown says, I'll leave this here. Kevin Garnett says, I don't want to be partners with Glenn Taylor. I would love to be part of a group that buys him out and kind of removes him and go forward. <sighs> it's just, see, that's the thing. You think it's just a simple conversation. And, oh, Glenn Taylor's a dope, which I've heard a million times. And You know, okay, Glenn Taylor's made mistakes. Glenn Taylor signed this contract. He signed that contract. Glenn Taylor did the Joe Smith thing, this and that. You could argue he wasn't feeling well at the time because he was under medication because he had just had, had some kind of a, a, a heart surgery, which is pretty important, by the way. Um, the whole Eric Fleischer you know, giving him a hard time and signing that wink-wink to ink-ink as uh, long, long ago uh, uh, 
Steve Ashburner quoted in the Star Tribune, one of the greats. I love Steve Ashburner. That guy's awesome. Works for NBA.com for many years now. But, of course, the Star Tribune beat writer before Jerry Z. Zagoda, Jerry Zagoda, who Mr. Uh, Tom Thibodeau gave a hell of a time last week. I basically started off with saying, you're welcome for the $200 million Glenn Taylor, Tim Taylor paid you, Mr. Garnett. That's what I don't like about him. Too much attitude. The venom. The anger. The, the, did Glenn Taylor kill Flip Saunders? I mean, for God's sakes. You know, no, he didn't. Glenn Taylor did not kill Flip Saunders. And the only reason you came back is because Flip encouraged him to, to come back and be part of the ownership group. And, oh, he would have bought out. They would have bought out Glenn Taylor. or Well, they wouldn't have bought him out, but Taylor would have sold the team to them and this and that. And that would have been the end of it. But, um, oh, I want him to be that. But to just to, to the way it's quoted, the way he says it, oh, buy him out and removes him and goes forward. Kevin, would you be that much better of an owner, though? Let's see. Let's show. So we count the. Uh, so we count things here a little bit. Trenton Hassel. We just had to have him on the roster for that huge contract, huge contract, which was not helpful at all. Um, he was below average. Almost no offense. His defense was okay, but I mean, almost no offense. And the contract was too much. Way too much. About. I mean, was it like six million a year? And this was not during the giant TV contract days. The NBA was making money, but not that much. And, of course, there was a huge lockout along the way, so the NBA wasn't doing as good before that. Uh, Troy Hudson, huge contract. Five bleeping years. Joe Smith, after the wink-wink to Inky, five years, because Garnett, you know, demanded him on the team. Without him, oh, boy. You know, and it's like, yes, management, ownership, stuff like that needed to stand up to Garnett and say no. But if they didn't stand up and say no, they would get this. They would get this. Regardless what Glenn Taylor did, regardless what Kevin McHale did, they're going to get this right here. Like, uh, oh, it's not like he ain't got it when it talked about uh, the Stefan Marbury uh, contract coming up. Garnett quoted way back then, it's not like he ain't got it. It's not about if he ain't got it. It's about the salary cap. It's not about if he ain't got it. This, <laughs> this isn't the New York Yankees in 1998 when there's no end to how much you can spend. Pun not, or rhyme not intended. There's no end to what you can spend. There is a salary cap. There are rules. There are limitations. There are limitations. This isn't this isn't the seven bajillion dollar TV contract from TNT and ESPN right now. Uh, back back then. <laughs> really though, would Garnett be a better owner than Glenn Taylor? Would he though? Would he? Or would he bring in all of his people? Would he reward all of his people who might not be the best people to run the organization? We're all guilty of being loyal. We're all guilty of this and that, being loyal to the wrong people. Oh, God, yes. But I'm not thinking <laughs> Kevin Garnett would be the best uh, guy to own this team. I, I, I really don't see it because I, I see some very negative attitude. And I see some people in this town that, oh, God, I'd love to Garnett to be the owner of this team. And this and that it would be the coolest thing ever. He would, he would be the best owner based on what? Based on what? Why would Garnett be the best owner for this team? Michael Jordan, I think, is smarter, and he's not been that great for the Charlotte Hornets, has he? In fact, he's been not that good at all, and he brought in his people for this, he brought in his people for that in the past, and it didn't work out, and it didn't work out, and it didn't work out. Um, I'm not sure, man. I mean, Magic Johnson has been removed from uh, as a player long enough. I think he's better. At this, he's probably the best manager out of the whole group. Even, but there was a time when Magic was a bit too out of control. Now he's much, much, much older. I mean, he's pushing 60 already, which I cannot believe. 2019, he'll be 60 years old. Wow, time flies. God, time really flies, man. Um, Magic Johnson, as you know, was only 31 when he retired because he was HIV positive, all that. That's almost 30 years ago. What the hell? <laughs> But no, I mean, he's had a lot of time to kind of sit back, relax. If Garnett was the owner of this team at age 42, 43, 44, we're bleeped, I think. Um, I, I don't think it'd be a good idea. I, I really don't. Um, uh, Flip Saunders is the kind of guy, sure, that would have been the perfect guy to run the organization. Maybe Garnett's the owner and stays, uh, doesn't stay involved in contract negotiations, this and that, and, and major decisions. Like Flip actually runs the team. He's the quote-unquote Tom Thibodeau, which Thibodeau is. But uh, Garnett, the way he runs his mouth, and I don't know, he would make enemies all over the place. He already has, and he continues to do it. 
you know, like it's not just Glenn Taylor that he's had beef with. He's had beef with the, um, I believe, the Heat owner, the Atlanta Hawks owner. And it's like, I don't know. I mean, we all have enemies. We all have disagreements. But there comes a time for a little bit of professionalism. And when there's a lack of professionalism, I don't know. And one final thing to note, one final thing, the 2011 lockout. Things were moving in a positive direction. And then they brought in Area 21, Mr. Area 21, into the into the room. And he went a bleep. He was using foul language, going off on this owner, going off on that guy. And the negotiations went downhill, and things were delayed at least a month from it. Uh, the, guy, the, 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 the conversations were completely off the table for about two weeks because he had done so much damage with his big mouth in the negotiations. Now, you might be thinking, I have this hatred for Kevin Garnett and his venom. But no, I'm presenting the information here. I'm not here coming up here just spewing and running my mouth. I'm giving you a conversation. Is, does this look like the kind of guy you'd want to own the team? A guy that has done this kind of damage in the past. He's not far removed from it at all. And he's still doing it right now. He's still doing it. So I don't think he's rational enough to own a team. I'm just saying. I loved him as a player. But at the same time, again, offensively, he wasn't the go-to guy. Uh, defensively, he was as good as it gets, this and that. And, he, you know, he was he was fun to play with for some guys, maybe not for others. But generally speaking, he was fun to play with. And as long as you had the right players around him, this and that, things were outstanding. And I loved him on the Boston Celtics. I did. I loved Kevin Garnett on the Boston Celtics. And if he is a Celtic for life, he's a Celtic for life. And that's his business at the end of the day. Huh. Today must have been in Australia at the time. Yeah, he, he travels a lot, doesn't he? <laughs> Because, <laughs> yeah, he is a New Zealander, but he was in Australia. But, yeah, I just noticed how it showed his location there when he posted that. Um, Telstra. That's interesting. That must be his uh, service provider. Telstra. That being Tanae Brown. Um, but, no, again, I'm not coming up here to shoot my mouth and spew venom towards Kevin Garnett. But I am just, I'm saying, people, please take the shades off. Open your eyes. Open your eyes. Wake up, okay? Please wake up. Don't just roll the red carpet out for a guy that might not be the most rational decision in the world. That might not be the most rational decision maker in the world. You know, you can love him as an entertainer. You can love him as a player. You can love him as an icon for this, icon for the game, icon for just fun conversation, entertaining personality. Maybe you like the cursing. I, I don't know. It's overrated, I think. I'm not a big fan of all that. And not everybody is. Um, we all curse and swear, but some of us more than others. <laughs> but please, sit down. Be rational as well. Because I don't think he's rational enough to own a team. I don't think he's rational enough to be a vice president of basketball operations or anything like that. Uh, you know, Michael Jordan wasn't good for the Chicago Bulls either if they would have allowed him to take over because he wanted certain guys on the team that would not have been the right decisions. And the Bulls said no. And then he hated them for it. But then they were able to put together the right group and they won six bleeping titles. This was back in the late 80s, early 90s, before the Bulls had won a championship, 1990, even you know, right before the 90-91 season when the Bulls finally started, you know, their quest to six championships, their real quest, where... He wanted certain guys on the team, if you read the book, The Jordan Rules, that ultimately would not have been the right fit. And they just said no. They just said no. Uh, and look what happened. The Wolves did not say no. And look what happened. The Cleveland Cavaliers did not tell LeBron James no. And look what happened. And then and then they got lucky in the draft. And, and they were able to make a trade for Kevin Love, which he wasn't the best trade ever. But Okay, you know, it wasn't the best trade ever, but it did help deliver the city of Cleveland a championship. Things were different the next time around. LeBron had matured. He put on a lot of, uh, you know, <laughs> he put on a lot of mental muscle. He already had the physical muscle coming into the league. You just pray to God he didn't cheat somehow. With, with uh, I wonder about LeBron James a little bit with some of those uh, <laughs> PEDs. I wonder, man. I wouldn't be surprised if one day... You find out LeBron James is guilty of uh, using performance-enhancing drugs during the course of his career. I wouldn't be surprised at all, particularly in game uh, number six of the 2013 finals. Something was funny about that. Creepy. Um, there was some information, again, from Kyrie Irving. But uh, still, now I'm going way off uh, into La La Land. But no, they told him no and this and that. He went to Miami, he got stronger. 
because he got frustrated with the direction of the team because all those guys he wanted on the team, ultimately, and that they, they were, he basically was saying, hey, we need to add this, we need to add that. They signed these guys to stupid contracts. It screwed up the team, and he left, just like Garnett went to Boston, won a championship. And then LeBron went to Miami, won two championships. And he got mentally stronger, because lucky for LeBron, he was younger than Garnett. He did it a little earlier, and Garnett actually regretted that, that he didn't leave earlier. Okay, sure. But don't come back and spew hatred for the owner. You know, you know, you don't have to love Glenn Taylor, but I don't know. Uh, it's bullcrap, I think. Cleveland won a championship later because they had the right people, regardless of this or that. Um, you don't let players dictate moves. You don't let players dictate uh, moves, dictate contracts, this and that. Uh, again, you come back and say, it's not Garnett's fault, it's not Garnett's fault. Yeah, to a point it's not. And, I, of course, management needed to stand up to him. But it also shows, what if Garnett was the manager or the owner? Hello? 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 Anybody out there? See? I'm just showing you. I'm just showing you. I wouldn't want LeBron James running a team either. Are you kidding me? Would you want LeBron James to be the general manager of your team? I don't think so. Probably not. At least not for a while. Not until he gets older and calms down a little bit. Points made. Let's call it a day. Thank you again very much for listening to the show. Let's. Uh, I want to encourage you to please write a positive rating on iTunes if you could, and I would thank you right away when I see it. Those of you in Australia, New Zealand, or whatever, and those of you that have, thank you very much. Writing a positive rating on iTunes or Double Twit or Stitcher, pardon me, is greatly appreciated. Also, though, final thing, the way for you to get on the show, of course, uh, there's the Facebook page, the Twitter account, but then there's the phone lines and the audio submission route. Phone line is 209-736-7877. 209-736-7877. It is a voicemail. Do treat it as such. Mention you're calling in for Tim Rule's explosion. Do your statement, shout out, comment, question, and opine. Greatly appreciated in advance. Uh, there's the call now button on the Facebook page. Goes through the same goes to the same phone line through Facebook Messenger so you could be from anywhere in the world as long as you're on Wi-Fi or cellular connection, whatever. It is not a long-distance call. It is through Facebook Messenger. You just need an internet connection of some sorts, be it your cell phone, cellular connection, network, whatever, or, again, Wi-Fi or whatever you like to call it, regardless where you are. And the final way to go, which has no limit because the phone line has a three-minute limit. So if you're going to do something a little bigger, like... Tanay could do, and Vince could do, and, and Wayno is always, uh, the green lights to him as well. You could go up to 20 minutes if you really had a lot to say, particularly going into a premium show, I, I would say. Um, but uh, generally, probably 5 to 10 minutes is my guess is what you guys will do. But you can go up to 20 sometimes if it's like a premium, you know, State of the Timberwolves type of show, or what if the Wolves win the championship? I mean, we could have a three-hour show with uh, people doing uh, long... Uh, uh, audio submissions, and I would have no problem with that if the Wolves won the championship, something like that. Or if the Vikings win the Super Bowl this year, something like that too. I mean, just just celebrate, enjoy, have fun. It would be a three-hour show, and you'd, you'd do part of the work for me. So my show would probably be the same length. My, my contribution would be the same length, maybe a little longer, and then you would just add it in, and just you'd hear the joy and the passion, this and that. But you get the idea. Audio submission rule. I'll get to the point of how to do that for some of you that might uh, have not gotten there just yet. There's the, uh, on every smart device, there's a free voice recording application or you could download one, whatever. If it's an iPad, I, <laughs> iPhone, Samsung tablet, Samsung Galaxy or Samsung Note, which I which is my phone of preference. Samsung Note, number, number eight in this case. So I hate that freaking edge. It's so dangerous, man. I think it breaks so easy. Okay, I'll calm down. <laughs> It's not dangerous, but it's, yeah, exposed. It's dangerous for itself. It's endangering itself, damn it. <sighs> use the voice recorder, sorry. <laughs> Record it however long. Or you could use Audacity on your laptop or desktop. You could do that route, too. If it's like a 20-minute call and you don't want to use your phone or smart device, maybe, well, iPad, maybe. Something like that, where you don't have to, you have to have a phone to your ear or maybe, you're, maybe you have a microphone, whatever. But, yeah, Aud Audacity is possible. And then you save it, of course, record it. And if I need to, I'll uh, convert it into an MP3, which usually most phones send me some weird thing called uh, M4A or something like that. And then I uh, just very quickly convert it into an MP3. You email that file to paladinolive at yahoo.com, paladinolive at yahoo.com. That'll be in the show description like it always is. You can use that for copy and paste purposes. Of course, the Facebook page and the Twitter account, all there as well. Thanks again in advance. Can't wait to hear you. Vince Germano, Tene Brown, or even Wayno as well. 
Uh, Stu Benson's welcome as well. He's got a green light. <laughs> Nicholas Simon, you got a green light, brother. You know, call in, do anything, you know. <laughs> Want to hear from you guys. tanae has got a voice for radio. Man, he's good. Oh, he's got a good voice. So, would be welcome on board. Of course, i uh, got to give a shout-out. I almost forgot. Jeez, Courtside Podcast, the best basketball show on the planet iTunes and, of course, Double Twist. iTunes and Double Twist mirror each other, so that's why I mentioned Double Twist to be on an Android application, So, or Android phone, pardon me. Double Twist is a good uh, way to get things off of that are that are iTunes-related. It just mirrors iTunes, basically, is what it does for Android devices. Uh, and, of course, there's Podbean. That's another way to get on the Courtside Podcast. There, there's the free shows, which most of them are free shows, but then if the premium shows, it's 20 bucks a year. 20 bucks a year, which is less than a cup of coffee at the Caribou's or Starbucks of the world or well, Dunn Brothers or whatever. Less than one cup of coffee a month. A small cup. Small. You know, the smallest thing, the cheapest thing at the store is this a small cup of coffee. Yeah, they're usually over two bucks. So, yeah, think about it. <laughs> it's, it's cheaper than that. So, for yeah, you can get the Christmas specials, all that good stuff, you know, season previews and season finale, this and all that fun stuff. There's other kind of fun shows that come along the way uh, that go into the premium show department. That's yeah, You need Podbean in order to get it. There's, you know, Podbean's free, but then you can sign up for the 20-year subscription to the Courtside Network on there. It'll be right there when you see the Courtside on there. And I will be joining the Courtside Network soon, one of these decades, right? <laughs> Thanks again in advance for calling in or writing a preview, a positive review for the show again. Thank you for telling your, thank you for those of you that do retweet the show and tell your friends about the show. I appreciate it so much. And those of you that haven't, please do tell your friends about the show if you could. It'd be greatly appreciated. Thanks again, everyone. Take care and we'll talk to you next week.